uh, turn off our mind when other people talk. You know, we, we have to check that uh, by leaving our mind there, there was some echo. Okay. So, uh, we, have, we are now at the time. I don't know. There seem to be three attendants. We wait one more minute and I will start. Could, could the participant uh, say something or show something that you, you are here? There is you. Oh, here. There is here. Okay, good, good, good. So we just start. Okay. The, Good morning from, from Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, I'm from Bangkok. And uh, welcome to a session of Process Asia Meeting 2020. And uh, this session is about realization of sustainable society triggered by COVID-19. Uh, so uh, how do we move? Thank you. Okay, uh, so the, it's my pleasure to serve as a chair of this session. My name is Walsak Kanok Nukunchai, Executive Director of Chungkorn School of Integrated Innovation in Thailand. And with us, the, we have the five panelists. Uh, Neha Ma Berlia, member of the management board. APJ Satya Group in India. Then we have the Claire Chen, managing partner of SGLT iSource Consulting Group in Taiwan. Then we have the Manich Kakanis, managing director of Spatial Impacts Australia. Then we have Kunihiko Shimada, chief Executive Officers of KS International Strategies in Japan. And last but not least, uh, George Wang, President and CEO of EBI International USA. So these are some of the talking points that uh, we are assigned to. I think uh, during the current pandemic, a lot of us are start to be familiar with uh, working from home, what they call telework and online meeting. Is this going to be sustainable? This is the first question. Second one, many business entities are now emphasizing on green environment with the aim to achieve sustainable society. Is this trend going to continue? This is the second question. The third one, uh, the panelists shall address on the above to issue whether they will be sustainable after the, everything is fully recovered. And what more can be done you know, to encourage deep sustainability? Okay, next I, I'm going to show you the, the five points that I think is going to become new normal. The only question is whether this will be sustainable. The first is that work from home, you know, seem to be a new normal. Many companies start to think about continue this even after the pandemic because they can cut down not only the cost of the office overheads, but also the traveling time of the employee. The second one, because of working from home, Gig economy can turn mainstream because people now can work anywhere. So they can take many jobs. So they can become freelancer. They can become on-call employee. And they, they said this could even be new normal for regular employees. Number three, because of this pandemic, you know, many companies start to 
or want to rely less on foreign supply chain. And then the, perhaps the, the, the age where one big corporate, global corporate, you know, spreading around the world may change into the, the era of alliance, you know, partnership. Number four, uh, since you can work anywhere, if product and services can be digitized, you know, then uh, you can get job anywhere, produce anywhere, and deliver anywhere, you know. So this could be a norm. And the last one, the greener norm for Mother Earth. Investors are now be thinking about the new role in order to develop greener product to make sure that the world will be a beautiful place to live, you know, as we experience during the social slowdown during this pandemic. Okay, so these are the, the five things that I would like to share. I will turn over to, to the uh, first speaker, first panelist, uh, Ms. Neha Berlia, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, very good morning. So um, I would like to first start by explaining about what our business is. So I am a third generational family business owner. We uh, own a large conglomerate in India. We are a 50 plus year old uh, group. Uh, we are into. Uh, we are known for education. So we have a large number of schools across India, as well as uh, higher education. We have a university and uh, and college campuses. Uh, this was started way back when. I mean, a post independence in India. So it's been we've been in India for a very long time. We also have um, overseas real estate and other businesses, and uh, as well as a, an old pharma company where we do uh, both uh, formulations as well as um, um, APIs. So uh, I'm, I'm, today's talk for me about COVID is, you know, covering a large set of segments in terms of, you know, when I talk about the education side, um, how we de how we have managed uh, the current scenario has been uh, very different when I compare to the corporate side. So I'll touch upon quickly with what we've been doing in the education side. So in the education side, we have teachers and students as well as, you know, uh, faculty as well as some of, you know, the principals, directors and those and uh, academic the academic sort of people. And what we've done is uh, it was fairly easier, I would say, to get um, online education started for us. We had estimated, you know, we were as a family sitting in New York during the time of the pandemic and we uh, expected this to happen. So we were in time to have bought those extra laptops and managed to give it all to our faculty. And so that part of things worked well. In fact, even students coming on Zoom nowadays, if I look at the Indian uh, Indian students, and a lot of them have computers. And for those who didn't, we were able to help them uh, be able to get them. And uh, we that's on the education side, I think has been more or less now streamlined. If I look at, I mean, if you look at that, hopefully, however, this is not uh, the norm one wants. And, I mean, education children do have to come to schools, but that has been working well. And even for the higher education uh, colleges, students and professors and faculty, they're on top of board. And in fact, it's been good for us in a way because a lot of those faculties we wanted for guest lectures are now easily giving those guest lectures because they're giving them on, on video. So a lot of them are, we are able to tap a lot of very good um, uh, talks and lectures and academic uh, uh, talks which we're not able to do uh, when we had to have them physically come into the campuses. So that's been on the education side. But now moving on uh, to the corporate side. So I personally look uh, at a lot of the administration and uh, uh, overall the campuses as well as, you know, some of uh, of our corporate side in the offices and managing real estate projects and construction. So um, to touch upon what those uh, in those businesses and in terms of real estate, uh, also construction, there there's a significant change in the mindset of people. And uh, what I have noticed is that we had to initially really push them to start with the video platforms and some of them by installing with softwares on, on their phone or by giving them smartphones and to uh, to do all that. But now when that started, I'm finding a huge increase in their output compared to what it was when pre-COVID. Uh, we've been, uh, I think what has helped, uh, I would start by that, has been uh, regular interactions which were not happening earlier. So earlier we would uh, wait for a meeting which would happen once a month or once in two months. Uh, I'm talking with the very junior staff, I'm not talking about the very senior level of people and uh, somehow it's all a collective effort. But now, personally, myself, I find myself interacting with a lot of junior, I mean, a lot of people on the ground. And uh, because of video, we've been able to do that. And because of, you know, having not having to have them physically in the office or physically having to meet them, it's been it's been working. And what I what in my personal experience, I have noticed 
is that uh, a lot of them are performing better so a lot of the performance of such people has increased uh, even though and especially during the pandemic there a lot of them went through a major um, it's not only just like sitting at home but it is also uh, children sitting at home family sitting at home so uh, we as an organization i think needed to support them uh, in the manner where they could feel comfortable as well as they feel uh, in a in a positive sense of approach when you get a, where you have a weekly meeting or you have a daily meeting so uh, just coming out some tips which have helped us i'm not saying uh, everybody has not responded that well so we have some people one has to work on a little bit more and some people uh, have been more automatic in this crisis and have done very very well uh, i would say the mindset has been uh, more about something which uh, we have focused on as as a as a group and uh, i think uh, these people they have Uh, in in our case, taken it very positively. But I'll I'll end now because I think my time my time is over. Thank you. Thank thank you so much for keeping the time. Uh, then we go to the next uh, panelist, uh, Miss Kershen. The floor is yours. Can you uh, turn on your mic? Kershen, you you hear me? You you. Okay. Um, hi, hello. Good morning, everyone. Hi, this is Claire. Um, the, let me uh, give you a little bit background on my and I have been uh, working about 15 years in the uh, this uh, senior executive management by bridging business culture from the west to the east in uh, many different industries such as fashion, entertainment, tech, e-commerce, digital media, and to start in the San Francisco Silicon Valley, Sydney, Melbourne, and Shanghai. Also Taipei, and uh, now we are a petite business advisory investment management consultant in uh, representation by managing uh, investment project with our clients and partner working closely with the private equity, family office, and uh, honey and water individual for uh, impact investment on sustainable commercial real estate development, uh, clean tech. Uh, Clean energy, biotech, biopharma uh, in Taipei, Silicon Valley, Amsterdam, uh, Munich, Auckland. We also help start up uh, raising funds. Um, we are also the officially representative uh, for one of the uh, Netherlands venture uh, biopharma major capital company for uh, their portfolio in uh, Europe. That's about it. <laughs> And. Um, So for it, about the COVID-19, for this uh, realization of the sustainable society for triggered by the COVID-19, I think um, we have been changing uh, our life, you know, differently uh, now uh, to uh, this uh, new normal life, which is uh, everybody is uh, doing uh, business uh, or through online. Uh, technology and uh, you can using all the current technology through uh, the communication or Zoom call or Skype conference call. Uh, email is pretty much uh, nowadays, and uh, either stay office or stay home. Uh, communicate through the internet and uh, uh, messages. Um, so um, for the uh, the. Business form are changing to those considered environment sustainable towards realizations of the sustainable society, and where the companies and both new and traditional be sustainable in, into the full recovery future. And what more is needed to encourage the deep sustainability? Uh, I do have some idea to point out. Like the, uh, we can actually look at the uh, the environment uh, in particular uh, to the, the practice for this sustainability initiative uh, to to consider the more uh, wide uh, range the potential event, effects. Um, we can identify uh, this opportunity to uh, incorporate the sustainable uh, principles into the regulator and. Enforce uh, incentive based uh, the partnership program or design the uh, target the strategy, including the identify approach uh, uh, appropriate goals to uh, 
advanced for uh, some areas. So uh, even we can uh, using the deep tech, uh, uh, think about the current technology to to uh, make the uh, our work better. Such as I can give you some example for. Um, we have a biopharma project right now, the COVID-19, right? So not just only vaccine, but we need it actually, we need it, uh, a drug. So if there is a drug treatment uh, for a cure, that would be good as part of the impact as well. And, uh, and uh, we talk about the clean energy, then we can think about if we can use more um, solar you know, energy or develop the uh, geothermal clean energy that could be all good for the uh, Mother Earth, that can be all sustainable. Um, uh, we also can look at it, the smart city and for the future and using the technology through the deep tech to come back with the blockchain, uh, fintech, um, through this green zone to create this smart city. I think that we can look at all the this uh, um, uh, area. Hello, thanks. Thank you, thank you. Uh, then we move to the next uh, panelist, uh, Mr. Manish Makani, Managing Director, Spatial Impacts from Australia. The floor is your Manish. Thanks, thanks, Vorchuk. Good afternoon and good day to everybody. This is Manish Karkhanis from Gold Coast, Australia. I'm the owner and the managing director of Spatial Impacts, which is a boutique uh, international business development company, which was formed in the year 2009. And we have been proactively assisting trade between India and Australia, as well as Australia and Asia and Middle East. So we've been helping companies set up shop in these countries as well as companies and businesses that are keen to look at Australia as uh, uh, another market or uh, maybe for expansion uh, to set up shop here and uh, and have a look at uh, coming into this part of the world which is a bit far away from, from the rest of the world so as to say but this is uh, an upcoming and a growing country and we've been helping big companies to come here and do the initial research and set up shop and introduce their uh, various products and services. Uh, so with with uh, with this engagement, I've got the opportunity to travel a, a lot. So I've been typically spending 10 to 15 days every month out of Australia, across Asia and Middle East. And uh, uh, being a small business, I have been more impacted by the by the coronavirus because it's more to do with uh, international travel and dealing with people face to face. But uh, uh, like we, like with the other panelists, uh, we are here to talk about how we can be sustainable in, in the future because of, of this pandemic. So the recovery of this would largely depend on companies being sustainable. We can't say we will wait for recovery and then be sustainable. The road to on everybody to sustainable practices. Now, like like Neha has mentioned, that uh, uh, I mean, a PJ is is a, is a huge group. I know them. I've grown them. I've, I've grown in India, so I know about them. It's it's a well reputed group. So a group like that, when they resort to having online and video conferencing and interacting with the employees, is the sustainable practices. But for smaller businesses who need to go out and meet people day to day, so such businesses need to find out new and innovative ways of doing business. We also need to have a look at existing practices. What are the practices that are actually helping us progress and also are not being too demanding on the natural resources? Because consum consumerism is something which is quite rampant today. I mean, we could, who thinks about, we could do with the second or the third car. We could do with the second or the third mobile. I mean, we need to take stock of what actually is the need of the hour. Uh, avoiding excess by way, by way of allocating resources rather than just rampantly exploiting, exploiting resources. We need to find out how we can allocate these resources in areas and different uh, uh, implementations. We also need to have a much more holistic way of life. Now, 
thanks to the coronavirus and the restrictions on travel, uh, almost everybody had to spend almost more than eight to ten months sitting at home or maybe working from home. So, uh, government and companies also need to think about policies on on large scale production. Countries need to think about their export policies because we need to be self sufficient before we actually start exporting stuff overseas. Uh, also, uh, there's a beautiful concept now which is being practiced in Paris and also in Melbourne, which is called the 15 minute cities, where big corporates are having their employees and their operations in, in cities where there's not much commute required. So, all the necessity requirements are within that 15 city, 15 minute. Uh, areas. So that is going to reduce the carbon imprints of people having to travel far away from work, relying too much on, on uh, cars and uh, 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 oil or gases. So people are going to use more cycle or walk to work. So that these are the ways where we can think of being sustainable. And this is where the future is. This is what I feel. And uh, I thank you for the opportunity to talk. And uh, uh, I wish all the panelists a very good day as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have two more. Next, uh, Mr. Konihiko Shimada, Chief Executive Officer of KS International Strategies, Japan. The floor is yours, Kuni. Thank you, Warzak. Uh, my name is Kunihiko Shimada, and uh, I would like to say good morning and hello to everybody who are watching this and also joining this session. And I'm currently serving as a CEO of the KS International Stati Strategies. It's a, the kind of consulting advisory firm on the many different areas from the conflict resolution towards the uh, climate change and sustainability and so on. And uh, I've been working as a peace mediator for the last 20 years. I also like I went to the have been to the war zones and also tried to resolve the questions. But also using the communication negotiation skills, I've also working with the companies uh, who can enhance the uh, kind of a communication strategies, how they can just face the risk situations well through the communication strategies and so on and also I'm currently working with the uh, the several hospitals and also welfare. Uh, care like the centers uh, in Japan and also in some other countries uh, to how to like enhance their business models and also uh, uh, how to respond to the uh, risks or costs uh, caused by the COVID-19. So that's what I've been doing and I've been doing many different things. So uh, if I just in try to introduce myself, I use up my own four, four minutes. So let me just go back to the, uh, this, the, let me to go, go, go to the point. And, uh, first of all, like at this session, I asked two or three questions. Actually, the, first of all, I would like to say the companies or maybe representative companies need to ask those questions to themselves and they come up with their own responses because uh, this will help them transform to more sustainable or I would say the efficient forms of the businesses. But the, uh, let me touch upon the three major issues. One is actually how we can res the prepare and respond to the risks. Second is actually as the fifth uh, slide of the words are prepared, greener future. And the third one is actually more, or more on the change in the mode of work. First of all, like uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, people and firms have to have also faced the challenges from other kinds of massive risks or massive like, you know, the threats by the, another kind of virus, which is actually cybersecurity. So we got lots of like ancient internet, like, you know, the viruses and uh, which also like a uh, cause a huge problem, the financial like losses and to many countries, even like, you know, the, um, it's a huge, huge amount of money. So that's one thing that like, we, while we're working, on the COVID-19 like responses, we also need to like uh, the, react to the other kinds of viruses, so called the cybersecurity. So we need to come up with the let's say the firms need to establish and enhance their own business continuation plan or business continuation management uh, strategies immediately before the world seems to overcome the costs and damages caused by massive economic and psychological turmoil through the COVID-19 pandemic. That's the first one. Second thing is, uh, in whichever sectors these companies are operating, 
each of them needs to come up with a concrete strategies aiming to uh, transform their business styles towards the decarbonization. Because in current the systems, especially globalization system, is that uh, we are seeking, aiming for the economic efficiency, but also that like, it causes lots of the the emits a, emits a lots of the greenhouse gases. So using this opportunity, when the all like a uh, transport or like uh, interactions are stopped, uh, we may need to come up with the new strategies how we can just run the business in the more eco friendly. So that's also one of the uh, key criteria for maintaining sustainability, sustainability to the business, the practices. Third one is I would like to touch upon the change in the mode of work. It means we need to make a shift from the tra traditional working styles and management style uh, to the new style by using the IT-based platform fully. So no more, it means also no more long hour commuting and mindset that everybody needs to be at office. So uh, most of the administrative works can be and should be done remotely via secure internet. While there's some productive works like negotiation mediation, which I'm doing, needs to be uh, still conducted face to face. So uh, that's one of the ways I also working on the AI. Uh, that's why like, and I would uh, suggest you to accelerate the effective application of the artificial aid and the, uh, the intelligence and human resource reshuffle, especially uh, given the capacity building training uh, to the those who are affected by the introduction of the AI. The let's say like uh, the, let's uh, train the how to use the AI in order to achieve goals or realize what companies will like to achieve. So uh, that's uh, this will help firms uh, maintain the level of employment, and that's what I would like to add at the end. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Well, we, we go to the last panel, of course, not, not the least, as I said. Mr. George Wang, President and CEO, EBI International, United States. Please. Hey, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, well, I'm only, I'm the one actually today is on the North America continent. Uh, my name is George Wang. You know, this is the evening of the Sunday here. And uh, my, my company, what we do in the last 21 years, we started a company basically implementing the, uh, we call that global concurrent engineering. So what it does is somebody, has an idea, a new innovation, want to build a product, and he may be done the earlier design concept. So what we do, we fin finalize the engineering design and then manufacturing process design, and then we we'll, uh, find out the uh, subcontractors in China, Taiwan, Vietnam, India, where were Thailand actually. We we have Australia. Uh, we work with them together for months of uh, uh, GIT model to build a product and eventually uh, package and ship it over to countries worldwide. So uh, that's what we do. And then the product ranging, you know, from consumer product and you know the silicon product, you know. Bottles or shared bike, uh, GPS, electronics, or you have those big company like Honeywell or whatever, those big guys, they have special, specialty design. And from the designer, they are looking for where in the world somebody can really build this part for me. You know, of course, they have their own sourcing team, but we are the specialists helping to get the manufacturing process developed and built. As we speak, in the last 21 years, um, we have been serving pretty much clients-wise in the US, of course, and in Europe, Australia, Africa, all over the place. And our resource manufacturing or engineering capabilities are also deployed worldwide. So our goal is really to help a lot of innovations and get the job done at a global scale and get the products built fast, 
lower cost and best utilizing the water resource. Easy to say, very hard to do. Anyway, so um, back to the sustainability of this uh, COVID-19. Uh, and this is, uh, uh, since I'm the only one from the US here, uh, it has been like a joke being <laughs> watched by the worldwide to see what's happening in the US. As we speak, we're locked down again. So I sneak it around and come to the office <laughs> because this meeting is essential. So it has been a major, major impact to everyone. And I think to some extent, you know, a lot of business families in this chaotic mode is kind of like a shattered, you know, spiritually. So it's really bad. That's why you see all these angry people doing this, doing that, right? So, uh, so, um, on the positive side, it's definitely greener because no job <laughs> or <laughs> you are not allowed to go. But that's only for the uh, white collar jobs. But for other business restaurants, they've been struggling. You know, service business is kind of like 70% of the US. That's what they do, right? So they are all having this major impact. And the productivity is pretty much gone at least 40, 60% down. So um, anything your order is made locally, you're not gonna see it in the next several months. It just, it's just really bad. So that's the, of course, there are some high tech companies, you know, in, you know, on the both coastal areas, you know, with the online every stuff, you know, those are the guys really benefiting from it, you know, Amazon, everybody else. So, um, so this is, uh, uh, there are all these inspirational speaker talking about, you know, the world, this pandemic is only accelerated the change. It's sooner or later will be like this anyway, right? But I guess, you know, this is kind of like a, more like a Darwin thing, you know? So basically you have to adapt and what can you do, right? before the vaccine available in the next year. So I think technically all we can do is through like this video conferencing, right? We call like a six ways of uh, communication, you know, instant messenger like WeChat or whatever, video conference, Zoom team things, and uh, uh, email, of course. So all we have to do, I think, really on the execution side is really how do we develop everyone to be an actor in front of the camera? If you're not good at it, you're gone. And then there are a lot of company, a lot of traditional business. They do not even know how to use a computer, right? They just got whipped out. No more job anymore. So it's kind of a sad story, but I think on the positive side, just from the execution side, at least for me, I'm training everyone I know of, employee or whatever, go use your camera. You have to learn how to do that now because that's the way to survive. I just recommend people do that. You know, something a little bit, aside from the big thing we cannot change anyone, you know, you know not even Trump. <laughs> so, so, uh, so uh, you have to do some control like everybody else said, right? Okay, use the cell phone, use the camera, you know, use a video conference. Let's do that, do that. If you do that earlier, you have a better chance to survive. Or you are, at it. and of course, I think, let me draw back in a little bit. So in Asia, you know, like Taiwan, China, Japan, everybody, right? You know, Thailand, except for India, everybody else is really in good shape. So US is, now it's out of control, basically. Uh, most big cities right now is we're all locked down again. And the only hope is that vaccine. So we're just waiting for that thing to come up. Anyway, green at a cost. So there's not much smoke anymore, but uh, we are trying hard to be online, you know, uh, everything, uh, 
anything we can do. So it's a sharpened skill also. So, yeah. Anyway, that's the part of what I'm. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. No. no. Well, the, what we will do next would be to invite uh, some of the audience, you know, who want to either comment or, or, or ask questions. Is there anybody the, from the audience who would like to say anything? Uh, I'm not sure how to do that. Uh, you can perhaps raise your hand somewhere or, or can you just open your mind and, and talk? Hi, I think, um, yeah, yeah, please, okay. Uh, I, I think, uh, can he know? Yeah, mention artificial intelligence AI, which is part of the deep tech. I mentioned just uh, the artificial uh, intelligence AI can uh, come can use you to do uh, this uh, this uh, um, uh, even after the thing where the smart team and you can make the everybody life better. I think that's uh, the way it is for the for the future. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we do that. We we open the floor for everybody, including the panelists, you know, and and uh, try to. We are trying to wrap up. The, we have another nine minutes, so so each one can say about two three minutes, two minutes, you know. So so uh, maybe anybody want to to start first, or, or we can go around. I think we make it open. Okay. So, so, yeah. Anybody else want to say anything? Okay. okay. So actually, I just wanted to add, like in my talk regarding this, that I feel uh, I know, like everybody has their own different perspective depending on the industry and size and country as well. But uh, generally speaking, what uh, I wanted to, one thing, of course, um, the whole idea of digital is something we have to get used to, and uh, also protecting how what we do and you know the conversations which one used to have, which were which were earlier not, um, which were earlier done say face to face. Now we have to protect them as well. So how we do the video calls and how we manage all that that is one another conversation as well as another step which one needs to look at in this new age. Um, but apart from that, I felt that you know feel like the management of HR and also allocation, especially for India. A lot of us are used to uh, hiring and uh, thinking of the roles and not really allocating resources effectively. And somewhere uh, this whole crisis for us, I feel, has taught uh, a bit more of managing HR in terms of really specific HR for job descriptions, making sure that the day to day is really well uh, established. Uh, each employee, uh, in fact, people so that they can look in the day and they can record their tasks if they have to do it on a computer. Uh, you should be able to see that. And it, it's motivational as well as it's good for the managers to check. So these are some new things which uh, we are ha now having to learn. And uh, I think hopefully like in the next few months or, you know, time to come, we will get better at this. And that I think should help uh, uh, also uh, for us to, to come back or, or to get adjusted to the new normal. Let's put it that way. Thank you. Sorry. Anybody else? Uh, may, maybe the, we can uh, go to the who else? The the participant. Anybody want to say anything? Uh, if not, then then we we go I to. I would like to emphasize something. Hi. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, we are the uh, uh, the master investment consultancy, and uh, we working closely with uh, two capitals uh, in the U.S. and uh, also Europe. We are looking at the startup companies at the growth stage uh, for scalable. Um, this uh, uh, our advisor partner, which is with this this capital company, have uh, five hundred million U.S. dollar ready to invest. For 2020 and 2021 for this startup. And this startup working at for Asia Pacific and US and Europe. Only at growth stage and uh, scalable. In the deep tech, such as you know, uh, Internet of Things, uh, AI, and uh, the FinTech development, or digital, uh, 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 this uh, in the content uh, uh, systems. To that's what we're looking at, but with all the licenses, it has to be in one place, of course. 
Thank you. Uh, thank so, you. Thank you. Uh, you guys, welcome to reach out. <laughs> That's it. Mr. Mani, you have anything to say uh, to wrap up? Yes, thanks. Thanks, Manchu. Is uh, like I said, the, the road to recovery would depend upon companies adopting sustainable practice. And I'm just repeating myself that we can't wait for recovery to adopt sustainable practice. It has to be done, and that's how we will achieve the recovery more faster. And planning ahead, taking whatever has been the learning, take this one year as a learning, plan and strategize according to the, the, the future. So if we don't learn anything from this one year that we have got, then I think a big learning is lost. Uh, and uh, we need to have a much more holistic way of life rather than just focusing more on consumerism, is what I feel. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Kuni, anything from you as a final wrap-up? Yeah, thank you, and I completely agree with uh, those uh, three who have already uh, stated, uh, you know, the additional comments. Plus, I mean, the my case is, I rather use the, like, for example, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson just said, the rather than the recovery, we should go for the, you know, build back better. It's also like uh, Joe Biden also mentioned in the United States. So that's the kind of mentality psychology is needed for like, uh, you know, having realized in the sustainable society after the comment. One thing is actually, in my case, my job is actually more 90% is international. So I definitely need international travels to see the people to do the actual mediation of the uh, war and also cases, even like a firm, like a war, I mean, between two farms and three farms. But we may also need to focus on the local, like, you know, the where we are, I mean, the, using this opportunity. Uh, the working with the community, working with the local community is also like uh, the way to have the realization of sustainable society, building upon something we already experienced by the uh, COVID-19. So that's one thing I would like to add to the discussion. Thank you. Thank you. George? Uh your final say, George, uh, George Wang. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, well, it's very interesting. So, uh, glad to hear a lot of comments. You know. So from, from uh, uh, my understanding, you know, so right now, hopefully by Q3 next year, uh, when the vaccine is applied, then People can start come back to a new come back to a new life, and this will be totally different from before because there are a lot of business they are wiped out already. It's very they have to regrow from the uh, from the uh, whatever seed they left, and so that's for a lot of business. Of course, needing one right, they are different. You know. Amazon, they are benefiting. You know, you know they, they don't they don't. They, they're the one benefiting from this. But how about those, you know, 90% of the business, you know, they have to figure out a way how to restart their business, let alone or scale anything. So uh, being green, being sustainable, um, that's, I think the genetic is kind of a fusion in, fused in through this one, one way or the other. If you are the survivor, you will bear that uh, mentality already. So uh, again, I think at this moment, you know, adapting the new way of communicating like this. So of course, everybody here that's common, but for anti person people, they don't. That's the sad part, you know. So uh, I don't know what's going to happen. But the young kids, they all start Zoom call, conf, you know, school, right? For a lot of adults, they're just hiding in there, you know. So uh, uh, yeah. learn the skill, learn to be an actor. Okay. Okay. So we, we we have the twenty five seconds left. So I would like to just uh, make a conclusion of these sessions. I think we, we are not sure how long uh, this pandemic is going to continue. 
But during this pandemic time, we, we have found you know, many good tactics. And we, we, we also enjoy a you know, better environment you know, when we are slowing down our social you know, kind of uh, gathering and, and meeting and so on. So, so uh, we, we hope that something that we found uh, to be good can continue and start being sustainable. And this is what uh, the, all the panelists uh, were hoping that the world will be getting better after the recovery from the pandemic. So thank you very much uh, for your contribution and look forward to, to you know, meeting and uh, working with all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.